Hello, Namaskar and welcome. Network Analysis or PERT NCPM. Let's take another case of drawing a simple networking diagram or PERT chart. <coughs> the case with us is draw a network for a project of erecting a small factory shed and there are various activities from A to K A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K yes immediate predecessors A has no predecessor B has no predecessor that means A and B both are initial activities that means the start event is a burst event from where A as well as B both start C follows A, that means A is predecessor of C or C is successor of A. So from arrow A, we have to again develop arrow C. Similarly, B is successor of, or D is successor of B or B is predecessor of D. Again, A is predecessor of E, B is predecessor of F. C and D both are predecessors of G. F and G both are predecessors of H. E alone is predecessor of I, H and I both are predecessor of J and J is predecessor of K. Now, first of all, the project doesn't start with only one single activity. The project starts with A and B, two activities. So there will be no single arrow as a starting activity. But at the end, you can see that J has only one successor, K. So J and K. K has only one predecessor, J. So J and K will be the single last two arrows or last two activities. I have already drawn a small network diagram as a rough work. Yes, including myself. It is not mostly possible to draw the directly to directly draw the final network diagram right from the question and it is always advisable to draw one or more say rough work kinds of diagram and then to go for drawing a final network i have also drawn this works as a guideline because sometimes directly on reading the question everything cannot be clear directly in our mind. So if we draw such kind of say a rough diagram some few things, few hidden things become clear. We have to even use eraser also. We have to use too many dummy activities. Then only we can think clearly that where can we remove the dummy activities, redundancy etc. dangling anything. We can save ourselves from the errors. Okay, let's start. As we have discussed, the project starts with two activities, A as well as B. Now, as a student, the first question is, which should we give name A and another B? This arrow and this arrow. We have two choices, A, B or B, A. What should we do? Just think about the successor activities and their successor activities and draw a suitable chart. Here, see E and E starts after ending A, D and F starts after ending B, C and D both are common predecessor of G. So it is advisable to take these two inside, not the outside. So we are going to give name A to the upper arrow and B to the lower arrow. This is very simple. Follow the vertical pattern. Okay, now C. Okay, and E. Both are successor of A. So we can draw two arrows. But which one will be C and E? If we go or rather follow vertical order, C will be upper side and E will be on lower side. But see this thing, we need to draw C and D such, in such a way that they can both become the predecessor of G. That's why we have to take C inside and here D inside. So logically or simply E will go on upper side. 
This is C, this is D, and this is E. Try to understand. A becomes predecessor of C and E. C and E. We didn't follow the vertical pattern of giving the name of the activities to the arrows because we want C and E as common predecessor of G. That's why we are giving the names, say, ignoring the vertical order. Okay. Now, A, B, C, D, E. Now it is turn of F. F also starts only after end of B. But, this F and the next G, both are going to be the common predecessor of H. Yes? So, we need to merge them in the next stage. If this is G, it will be like this. F. Yeah. So, it is not compulsory to draw F first and G in order. Rather, it is not compulsory to maintain the alphabetical order. We can go according to our convenience. Yes. I am just changing the direction. Yes, okay. See, this is merge event. This is example of burst event. This is also example of merge event. Now, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now it is turn of H. And C, G and F and G are common predecessors of H. So it is H. Now think before drawing the arrow sign, is H a predecessor of any other event or more or, sorry, one or more events? Yes, only one, J, but together with I. So we need I before ending the, rather before completing the sign of arrow. The predecessor of I is E, that is here. So... Now we can draw I something like this. Because I and H both are common predecessor of activity J. So now this is J. J is the only predecessor of K. So this is K and K is the last activity. So this is the end event. See, more or less the same. This is just a rough work. I advise you to go for this kind of one or more rough works. Then only go for drawing the final network diagram. Now, the turn of numbering the nodes. As I had discussed in the earlier lecture. Just go from left to right. First take the initial event number 8 1 now we shall remember that we have already used number 1 now forget all other activities on left side and go to the next level if there are two or more events vertically number them from top to bottom vertically so this must be 2 this must be 3 Yes. Okay, now it is very simple that if this is say exactly vertically, there can be a confusion. Now it is upon us how to number, yes, 4, 5. It may happen that you have shown E like this. And the same node may be appearing here in your notebook when you draw the network chart or per chart for this particular data. Then you can number this as 4 and this as 5. Now this will be 6 and now very easy 7, 8 and 9. Yes, this is start of the project and this is end of the project. No, it is not compulsory to write these both terms, but 
to show where the charge starts and where it goes. So this was another case of drawing a simple network diagram. Again at the cost of repetition, I advise you all always to draw one or more this kind of work, uh, rough works before going to draw the final part chart. That's it. Thank you very much.